In this presentation, we're going to discuss about inter-process communication. So we have seen that a process is nothing but an isolated environment or isolated memory region or a sandbox if you will. So if you are in a sandbox, how do you get certain things done? We have seen handles to communicate to the kernel and the rest of the operating system. So handle is a typical inter-process communication scenario. In fact, most of the inter-process communications uses handle. So we have to do so many things outside our sandbox. For that communication between processes outside our sandbox, we use IPC or inter-process communications. Inter-process communications are well-defined mechanisms by OIS kernel to communicate between processes and to kernel itself in a secure manner. All IPC whatsoever is mediated by the Windows kernel or the operating system kernel. A process cannot do with no exception an IPC of any kind without a kernel switch. As a matter of fact, you have already done so many IPCs. Clipboard in Windows is a typical example of inter-process communication. You copy from Notepad to paste to another Notepad or Word or Excel. Clipboard is a typical inter-process communication mechanism. We all have used it. Another typical example is a file. A file saved from notepad can be opened from a word. Network sockets are in the process communication mechanism. For example, when you access Google or any other website, you are communicating with a process which is running on the Google server or on the web server and your web browser. They are doing inter-process communication. Inter-process communication can be between computers as well. For example, in the case of web browser, it is between computers and more than often we use handles to do inter-process communication. For example, in the case of clipboard, clipboard handle. In the case of file, it's a file handle. So with the handle only, we are able to talk to the kernel. That's why we need a handle. These are some of the other inter-process communication mechanism within Windows shared memory or memory mapping, remote procedure call, local procedure call, component object model which uses remote procedure call or local procedure call internally, windows messages, sockets, named pipes, named mutex, semaphore events, debugging APIs, Simple files as I mentioned, clipboard, if you have a kernel driver, if you have a custom kernel driver, you can do inter-process communication. For example, in later operating system, post Windows 8 and later, a print of or console application uses a kernel driver for inter-process communication mechanism, condiavi.sys. Let's see a quick demo of couple of inter-process communication. So here I'm showing the example of an on-screen keyboard. So on-screen keyboard, this is a different process and this notepad is another different process. But when I click on the on-screen keyboard, it is sending messages to the notepad application. So on-screen keyboard uses Windows messages. Another example I wanted to show you is based on COM or component object model. 
So I have just opened here a PowerPoint presentation which is uh, running inside PowerPoint EXE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a chart into the PowerPoint. So when I inserted that chart you can see that my Excel here also popped up. So now I'm going to change something in the Excel. So that change you can see that is reflected here in the PowerPoint. This PowerPoint and this Excel are two different processes. And they are using COM or Component Object Model which is using RPC or LPC internally to communicate between them. So this is another example of inter-process communication which are not very obvious. So coming back to presentation and summary. So we have seen inter-process communication is an important aspect of processes. Kernel is involved to mediate this to happen. Different types of inter-process communication all are brokered by kernel via well-defined Windows APIs. Doing IPC is a matter of calling one or more APIs with the correct permission and in the correct order. So we'll see the programming part of these things probably later. For the time being, that's it. That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.